Hey guys, welcome to another Garage Time with Goody. What we're gonna be doing today is changing a fuel pump in a 2005 Dodge Durango 5.7 liter engine Hemi edition. Okay, as you can see, you're gonna want your tools. You're gonna want some jack stands for safety. And of course, I have a jack. Now, it is important to use the jack stands here because just in case somebody stumbles over this jack or accidentally lets it down, you will not die. <laughs> That's right. The weight of the vehicle that you're working on will not smash you and kill you. So that is very important, guys. A lot of people don't practice safety. I do, and I recommend it. Now, as you can see the Dodge Durango, this is the driver's side, by the way. On the driver's side, you're going to want to put the jack about here in the middle of the vehicle so that it raises it up and it will give you enough clearance underneath there. And then you'll put these jacks on the frame to hold it up. That is the first step. And then it's going to it's going to elevate the Durango so that you can have better access underneath of it because the gas tank is located directly underneath in this area underneath the driver's side of the Dodge Durango. Once you're under the Durango, this is going to be your gas tank. This is the heat shield and these right here are the metal straps that hold up the gas tank. There's one here and one here. The gas tank itself is plastic. What you wanna do is drain all the gas that you can out of the gas tank with the siphoning hose. So this gas tank will not be quite so heavy on you. Now, you're gonna to wanna to go to the driver's side, which is the side I'm on of these straps, and you will see you will see those, those are 15 millimeter bolts. And then there's one up here, a 15 millimeter bolt. What I have is a ratchet with the 15 millimeter socket. Now I've already checked these bolts and I can loosen these, but you may want to use liquid wrench if, if you need to, okay? I am going to do the strap closest to the engine first. And uh, here we go. Okay guys, the bolt is coming down now. As you can see, this is the bolt that was holding it in. And then there is the strap. You see how the gas tank is, is movable now. Now what you're gonna to wanna to do next is you're gonna to wanna to put something underneath this gas tank to hold it up before you remove this strap. That's important. Next step you wanna do before you take off this uh, before you take off this strap, you're gonna to wanna to get a jack stand and put it underneath the, the gas tank or for safety. You kind of kind of want to put a block, a wood, a piece of wood underneath of the jack stand. So that way it will distribute the weight evenly and it won't puncture your gas tank. So then just take this strap and we're going to go to this side. And the strap, as you can see, you can turn it. Okay, as you can see, starting to come down now as you turn it be careful with that rust debris and then when you turn that at an angle and pull down you can see that right there how it'll just come on down and then you got this whole strap out and you're going to want to put it out of your way and then once that is done you are ready to take off the second strap here is the second 15 millimeter bolt. This one is gonna be a little harder to reach. So I've got probably about a foot 
to 16 inch extensions on here with the 15 millimeter socket six now it's 12 sided it's not deep well and i also have a wrench that i'm going to use as a cheater bar if i need to so i'm going to go up here to the second bolt another thing you might want to do is use safety glasses if you feel like there's a lot of debris that's going to fall on you so what i'm going to do you kind of take this this is a, a box wrench i'm turning it backwards put it over the ratchet and i'm going to pull back Ugh. and that's how you break a bolt loose without a breaker bar and before you start taking this down you're going to want another board and another jack stand because when this comes down you're going to want to hold the gas tank up because after this there will be no metal straps holding it up so here we go with that 15 millimeter now another thing that you won't notice on camera that these 15 millimeter bolts were pretty hard to break loose and i used if you have a breaker bar use that if you have a cheater pipe use that if you have a wrench like i did go ahead and use that so they are a little bit difficult to take off you might need to use some liquid wrench or whatever but don't give up and keep trying and these things will come off There it comes a little bit. There's gonna be a lot of rust. Do you need the jack under there for you to get off? So here's the second 15 millimeter bolt. It's coming out. I'm gonna place this jack right there. I'm gonna place that jack under there. And you might have to adjust the height. I'm just guessing the height. And I'm going to put the board so that it doesn't poke a hole in the gas tank and so that it distributes the weight correctly. And I'm going to go ahead and take this strap on out. And it is really hard to get to, guys, because here is the, uh, the drive shaft. And you have to turn the strap. As you can see, I'm having a little bit of a hard time, but I'm turning the strap. What I'm doing now is I'm pushing this strap over and I'm bringing it down. And that's the second strap is completely off. Now is the fun part. I have lowered the gas tank onto the jack stands and you can see that I'm gonna have to take some connectors off of the gas tank and a quick disconnect line there and there are some lines that i'm going to have to disconnect on up through there so that i can fully take the gas tank off of the vehicle the next step is you guys you have to be careful there's going to be a line over here you don't want to take it off it's plastic so leave that line alone then there's going to be this connector hose and this quick connect hose now you're going to want a smaller ratchet with a seven millimeter uh, socket and i'm going to first take it off from right here just put that on and just start taking it off and i'm doing this while the gas tank is not on the ground it is still elevated by the jack stands so we're gonna loosen up this band that's holding it onto the gas tank. Hopefully your uh, rubber hose isn't dry rotted. You wanna kinda inspect for leaks as you're doing this whole job. Make sure that your gas tank isn't leaking anywhere or any of your hose isn't leaking. 
If so, that could be why your vehicle is rough on gas. Okay, now that is definitely loosened up. Use the disconnect tool. It opens up like that and you actually put it around this metal hose and you push in and you hold on to the metal cap and then you push against it and pull back and it comes off just like that. That's how you get the disconnect off. So these two hoses are pretty much disconnected. Once this drops down, this hose will come off because it's already loosened up and disconnected. The quick connect is disconnected. So now we're going to do the other hoses. Okay, what I have done is I have removed the jack stand underneath this and I'm going to set this down slowly. I've disconnected this hose. There's also a handle for you to hold on to and I'm holding on underneath. I'm going to set this gas tank down slowly. Remember, you want to make sure your gas tank is empty as possible so this won't be too heavy on you. And once it lays down, it lays down just like that, guys. And then you should be able to see the connectors. Can you guys see the connectors and where the fuel pump goes? Right there, disconnect. So we're gonna go ahead and disconnect those hoses. Next step is to go ahead and lower, take out the other jack stand and lower the gas tank straight down. You'll have this electrical hookup to the gas tank. It has a tab that you just push in with your thumb and wiggle it back and forth. And it comes off just like that. And there's gonna be two more connections. One here that hooks to the fuel pump and one up there. There's another quick connect right here, which you can actually get with your fingers. You put your fingers on the two plastic tabs and then you just pull and then it comes loose just like that. And as you can see, that is off there now. The next step is, as you can see, there is an electrical connector that you just simply use your thumb to pull the tab out and then gently pull and it's ready to come out. And this uh, tank will be able to be dropped to the ground. So guys, so you can see what connector it is that I just disconnected it from. It was right there and it plugs into the gas tank right there near the front of the gas tank. This was the electrical connector that needs to be unplugged. The gas tank is now dropped on the ground. As you can see, the gas tank in all of its glory here. There's one hose here. It looks like maybe it goes into the fuel filter. That looks like a fuel filter. I could be wrong. If this is not a fuel filter, you guys can tell me in the comments below, but it looks like it goes into a fuel filter. There are no bands or anything. So this should just wiggle off. Don't pull too hard, try not to break it. And you can see it's coming off just like that, it's off. Or over the fuel pump. What you can see, there is a little clip right here and this is not quick connect. And I'm gonna open that up. Flathead screwdriver and it opens that up once you pull this tab up it should give it the freedom to unhook just like that and you there may be some gas left in the line so be careful and put that gas line up out of the way i've put it up there out of the way as you can see i've unhooked everything from the gas tank we have all of the lines unhooked finally. So we are ready to pull this out from underneath the vehicle. The gas tank out easily. This is what it looks like. Pull it over here. This is how big the gas tank is. This is it. 
This is the heat shield. This is the gas tank. And let me show you guys what the gas tank looks like just as it's been pulled out of the Durango. It is one big piece of beauty that gives this the power to go. It's about at least a good three and a half feet. And the part we're about ready to replace is this right here, the fuel pump. Cause the engine is getting no gas to it. The next step is to take the actual fuel pump off of the tank. I have washed the tank underneath, side on the side, everywhere. And if you're gonna ask what I use, I took my time and I used a cloth and regular soap and water and got everything clean. It was pretty dirty. The next way to do this, and I've been getting a lot of rust. See, look at all this rust that's breaking off. This seal here is what holds down the fuel pump. And what I'm using to take the seal off you look and see which way that it needs to go. In this case, it need, this seal needs to be pushed up and there is these little grooves inside of it and you use a flathead screwdriver and put it up against this and just hit it with a hammer. Of course, uh, see, more rust is falling off. This is probably the first time this has ever been removed. Okay guys, if I run into any problems, I want you to see it because you could run into these same problems. I have gotten a lot of rust off of this, um, I don't know exactly what it's called, but this piece that seals the fuel pump to the gas tank, it is totally rusted. And I'm chipping away at it with a flat head screwdriver and a hammer like this sideways. And that's taking a while. And I'm also using that with a combination of a wire brush. And I'm gonna clean it on down so that I'll be able to take this off. But I just wanted to show you, cause like I said, if I have a problem, you guys may have the same problem too. And I just wanna show you how I'm dealing with it. So guys, what I kept doing is uh, sanding the rust down. I took a chisel and I hit this really hard all the way around like this. And I've done it at different locations pretty hard and finally this came up as you can see and then this comes up and then this is the fuel pump the fuel pump will come right on out of there here's the gasket that goes around the gas tank let me put that over there and then let me get the fuel pump on out of here And now that is how you remove the old fuel pump. You may have a little bit of gas left in there. Be careful with that. Um, this thing has definitely seen better days. What you wanna do, you'll see that there are part numbers right here. These are your part numbers and you will wanna match that up when you're ordering your new part or you have a choice to order you know you can go get this from AutoZone and it'll cost you a lot at retail or you can order this wholesale like online like ebay amazon or rock auto and you'll get this a lot cheaper is the day that the part has come in and we're going to do the reinstallation of the fuel pump there it is 
in all of its glory. It comes with another gasket and of course a fuel pump. With that in mind, let's get started. What we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure that the quick connect is facing opposite side of the heat shield. And we're gonna put the floater and everything down inside the gas tank. We're gonna put the floater in first, then it's gonna go down in and then okay what i'm doing now is i'm taking out the gasket that is going to provide a seal between the fuel pump and the fuel tank it goes over top and around and it goes into this little space here beside the fuel pump so let me put it in the little area around the fuel pump if you guys can see that make sure it's in there flush can you see that right there how it goes all the way around and then when you get the fuel pump lined up there's going to be springs here in the fuel pump see there's going to there's going to be springs right here in the fuel pump and you're going to have to gently actually push down on the fuel pump to get it to lie flat once you get it in there and make sure the flat end is facing downward. And the end that's pointed upward is facing upward. What I'm gonna use is a chisel now, and it'll give me more, it'll give me more leverage. Here's how you know if you have it on there, guys. You see there is the metal indentions on in the middle of these rings. You want the middle indentions to line up with the middle of the tabs. And that is how you know if it's locked back into place. And also, that gasket I put on right before this is very important. So you wanna make sure that gasket is on there good. Now we have installed the new fuel pump. Next step is we're gonna put the gas tank back underneath the Durango and hook everything back up. Sounds like fun, huh? The very first hose that I'm gonna rehook back up is the one that I said that was connected to the fuel filter, which is right here. I believe that's the fuel filter. So I'm gonna take this hose and push it back on there is no uh there's no band on here so you just kind of shove it on wiggle it back and forth and that's connected just like that the connection i didn't get the first time very well that i want to get as i'm reinstalling this gas tank is right above the transfer case there is a quick connect line that i'm going to be hooking this up to and it's right on the front of the gas tank. You can see how there's a quick connect clip there and it just connects right in that line right there. I've used the jack so that I can uh, raise the tank up enough to reach these hoses. Okay, and I'm gonna install the first hose. First hose. You just push until you hear it snap. It is in. Now I'm going to hook up this plug to right here to the front of the gas tank. Just plug it in the power to the fuel pump. If you can see this wiring harness. See, if you heard that click, I pushed all the way until I heard the click. Next, I have replaced the quick, I have replaced the plastic piece on the quick connector that you saw me take off uh, when I was taking this out. It's very important that you put a new one on if it breaks. 
and that's what I did. I pushed all the way on the fuel pump line on the quick connect until I heard it click in place. So that's exactly what you need to do there. Now from here on, uh, I'm going to put the jack stands underneath the gas tank to raise it up and start putting it back together so I can hook up the last two lines up there. Okay guys, I wanted to show you this gas tank is a lot lighter now. So I have it on the jack stands with the wood up top to distribute the weight evenly so it doesn't poke holes in the gas tank and I've got it that way with the top two. Now you don't want to, when you're putting the jack stands underneath here, you don't want to block where the metal support beams or the metal support bands are going to go back into place. Be sure not to block those. The gas tank high enough for I'm going to try to put these quick connects back, this quick connect back on. You hear that? Just snapped right on. And the next thing I'm going to do is this hose. This is where the gas comes down into the tank. Put it back over the gas tank or onto this, this plastic connector. Let me bring up the jack stand a little bit. Lifting it up a little more on the jack and just take your time. Okay, what you want to do is you want to keep twisting this down on the plastic connector until it is even with the lip on the plastic connector. Bring down this clamp and you want to get a ratchet and start tightening it back up. If you wonder what size this is, by the way, it's a seven millimeter. Last step is to make sure that this bolt that connects to the rubber to the plastic on the gas tank is tightened on that band, which I pretty much tightened it up. And then I'm ready for the next step, which is to put the straps back on the gas tank. Okay, up there guys is where you're gonna wanna put the straps back on, but don't put the bolts in yet because you can still move the tank around and you're gonna to wanna to be able to move it around to put the second strap on too before you bolt it down. So just let it hang for a second. I'm gonna to try to get the second one on and these can be a little difficult to get back on. Okay. I got this up in here, guys. It was kind of difficult a little bit, but as long as you push the gas tank the way you need it, you can get it up on there. And now I am ready to put the two 15 millimeter bolts back on the straps, guys. See you on the other side. I almost forgot before we button it all back up, we're going to see if the fuel pump kicks in when you turn over the key. Okay, go ahead. Did you hear that lovely sound? Okay, what we need to do now is put the bolt over the strap, line it up with the strap hole. And you have those 15 millimeter bolts. 15 millimeter bolts need to go back in. And be careful with these lines up the side of the bolt. Get this good and tight. Okay, first one's in. Let's take out the jack stand. We're ready to do the second one. I'm putting the bolt and the strap, and as you can see, there's a hole up there that I'm gonna aim the bolt into. Again, this is the 15 millimeter. 
And on this side, you're gonna have to use a bigger extension. It's about a 12 to 16 inch extension. It's on good and tight. Now what I'm gonna do, take this block of wood off of the jack, off of the jack stand, take the jack stand, put it out. Then if we look underneath here, it is all back where it's supposed to be and back together. And now there's only one last part. Let's go get some gas. One of the last ingredients is gas. We're gonna put some gas in the gas tank. Don't say boom, boom. And yeah, we're gonna try to get this baby started. the truth and just like that gas is delivered to the motor and we are back that my friends is how you change the fuel pump in a 2005 Dodge Durango 5.7 liter Hemi edition if you like my videos give me a thumbs up subscribe to my channel and until next time, have a good day.